When do you think the first human will step foot on Mars? I think it's a good chance in the 2030s that we will be on Mars. In fact, there's no physics reason why we can't do it. It's an engineering problem. It's a very difficult and dangerous engineering problem, but it is an engineering problem. The fate of all life on Earth is extinction. These aren't the words of a doomsday prophet. They're from one of the world's most respected physicists, Dr. Michio Kaku and his warnings about Mars colonization will change how you think about humanity's future in space forever. While SpaceX pushes forward with ambitious Mars plans, Kaku is sounding alarm bells about dangers most people never even consider. What he's discovered about the reality of living on Mars is both terrifying and absolutely crucial for our survival as a species. This isn't science fiction, it's a chilling scientific reality that could determine whether humanity thrives among the stars or becomes trapped on a distant desert with no way home. Dr. Kaku has spent years studying the brutal realities of Mars colonization, and his conclusions are far from optimistic. While the world celebrates every SpaceX milestone, Kaku warns we're racing toward a catastrophe disguised as progress. His message is crystal clear. We must become a multi-planet species, but not the way we're currently approaching it. Mars isn't just another destination. It's what Kaku calls the Great Filter, a test that could either elevate humanity or destroy our spacefaring dreams entirely. The terrifying truth? We're treating Mars like a backup Earth when it's actually a death trap for the unprepared. Kaku's warnings cut through the hype with surgical precision, revealing gaps in our planning that could prove fatal. What he's uncovered about our readiness, or complete lack thereof, should make every space enthusiast pause and reconsider everything they thought they knew about colonizing the Red Planet. The real risk nobody talks about. Here's what Kaku discovered that no one wants to admit. Mars colonization isn't just difficult, it's a logistical nightmare that could trap humanity in an impossible situation. The planet offers virtually no protection from deadly cosmic radiation that would slowly cook colonists from the inside. The atmosphere is so thin, just 1% of Earth's pressure, that your blood would literally boil without a pressure suit. Temperatures plummet to minus 80 degrees Celsius, making Antarctica look like a tropical paradise. But here's the part that keeps Kaku awake at night, the supply chain problem. Every two years, Earth and Mars align for cargo shipments. Miss that window and colonists are completely cut off for 26 months. No rescue missions, no emergency supplies, no way home. Kaku warns this creates a scenario where we might not get a second chance if something goes catastrophically wrong. The most chilling reality. We're accelerating toward this future without solving these fundamental survival challenges first. If you find these revelations as shocking as we do, don't forget to subscribe. We bring you the latest scientific discoveries and warnings that mainstream media won't cover every single week. Hit that subscribe button because what Kaku reveals next will completely change how you see our future in space. Because here's the twist that makes Kaku's warnings even more disturbing. It's not just that we're unprepared, it's that our current approach could doom the entire concept of Mars colonization before it ever truly begins. Kaku has identified what he calls the point of no return scenario. Once we establish a permanent Mars base with current technology, colonists become completely dependent on Earth for survival. Any major crisis, economic collapse, war, or natural disaster on Earth, instantly cuts the lifeline to Mars. The result? A slow, inevitable death sentence for everyone on the Red Planet. But the psychological factor is even worse. Kaku warns that the isolation, communication delays of up to 24 minutes with Earth, and the stark realization that you can never spontaneously return home will trigger mental health crises unlike anything we've seen. We're not just sending explorers to Mars. 
we're potentially sending people into prolonged psychological exile. What do you think is humanity's biggest blind spot when it comes to Mars colonization? Let us know in the comments before we reveal Kaku's most shocking prediction about what could go wrong. Remember, Kaku's warnings aren't theoretical. They're based on hard science and brutal mathematical reality. And the deeper you dig into his research, the more alarming it becomes. This isn't about stopping Mars colonization. Kaku actually supports the goal. What terrifies him is how our current timeline and approach could turn humanity's greatest achievement into its most catastrophic failure. Here's what makes his warning so urgent. Every day we delay addressing these fundamental challenges, we get closer to a point where political and economic pressures will force us to launch unprepared missions anyway. Kaku fears we're creating a scenario where the first real Mars colony becomes a death trap that sets back human space exploration by decades or potentially forever. The stakes couldn't be higher and time is running out to get this right. The chilling truth about terraforming. Here's where Kaku's warnings become truly spine-chilling. Everyone talks about terraforming Mars like it's an inevitable next step, but Kaku has done the math, and the results are terrifying. To make Mars even remotely habitable, we'd need to raise the planet's temperature by just 6 degrees Celsius. Sounds simple, right? Wrong. This would require deploying massive space mirrors or orbiting solar collectors. Megastructures so enormous they dwarf anything humanity has ever built. We're talking about industrial projects that would make the International Space Station look like a toy. But here's the nightmare scenario Kaku discovered. Current technology isn't just inadequate, it's centuries away from what we actually need. Without these impossible megastructures, Mars remains a frozen, airless wasteland where every breath of air, every drop of water, and every calorie of food must be shipped from Earth at astronomical cost. The brutal reality? We're planning to colonize a planet we can't even begin to terraform. It's like trying to build a house before you've invented concrete. Still think colonizing Mars is humanity's destiny. Kaku says we've got everything backward and his next revelation might be the most unexpected warning yet. We shouldn't terraform Mars, Kaku argues. We should terraform Earth's thinking first. What he means by this cuts to the heart of our entire approach to space colonization, and it's not what anyone expected to hear from one of the world's leading physicists. The problem isn't just technical, it's philosophical. We're rushing to escape Earth's problems instead of proving we can solve them. And according to Kaku, this mindset guarantees we'll simply export Earth's failures to Mars, creating the same disasters on two planets instead of one. What comes next in his analysis will fundamentally challenge everything you believe about humanity's future among the stars. The psychological collapse no one is ready for. What Kaku discovered about the human mind on Mars is perhaps his most terrifying warning yet. Long-term Mars habitation won't just challenge our bodies, it will systematically break down human psychology in ways we've never encountered. Picture this nightmare scenario. You're 140 million miles from Earth, surrounded by the same four walls every day, breathing recycled air, eating the same processed meals. Every conversation with loved ones on Earth has a 24-minute delay, killing any sense of real connection. The landscape outside never changes, just endless red desert stretching to the horizon. Kaku warns that this sensory deprivation, combined with complete isolation and the crushing realization that you can never spontaneously go home, will trigger psychological breakdowns on an unprecedented scale. Add the constant threat of radiation poisoning, muscle decay from low gravity, and zero emergency response capabilities, and you have a recipe for mental collapse. We're not sending explorers to Mars. We're potentially condemning vulnerable human minds to prolonged psychological torture with no escape route. Kaku isn't alone in these concerns. Dr. Robert Zubrin, aerospace engineer and founder of the Mars Society, 
has echoed similar warnings about the psychological challenges we're ignoring. The psychological part is the biggest unknown. Zubrin explains, we can simulate gravity with rotating habitats. We can simulate Earth food with advanced hydroponics. But we cannot simulate hope when despair sets in. Even NASA's own psychological studies reveal disturbing patterns. Astronauts on the International Space Station, just 250 miles from Earth with constant communication, already show signs of depression and cognitive decline after just six months. Now imagine that same isolation multiplied by thousands, with no possibility of emergency evacuation. Dr. Andy Weir, author of The Martian, consulted with real NASA scientists and concluded that the psychological challenges may be insurmountable with current technology. That's why Kaku and other leading experts agree. The warning isn't about whether we should go to Mars, but about how catastrophically unprepared we are for the human cost of getting there. The cold reality. Here's the most uncomfortable truth Kaku forces us to confront. Mars colonization won't save humanity from Earth's problems. It will amplify them in the most dangerous environment imaginable. The biggest misconception driving our Mars obsession is treating it as an escape route from Earth's failures. Kaku demolishes this fantasy with brutal logic. The expense alone should make people more interested in fixing a few things on this planet, rather than abandoning it for an even more hostile world. Think about it. We can't solve climate change, poverty, or resource scarcity on a planet perfectly designed for human life. Yet we're convinced we can build a thriving civilization on a frozen, irradiated desert where every mistake is potentially fatal. Kaku warns this isn't optimism, it's dangerous delusion. Mars should be humanity's insurance policy, not our primary plan. Relying on Mars before solving Earth's challenges is like abandoning a damaged ship for a lifeboat that's already taking on water. The result isn't salvation, it's drowning twice as fast. So what's the end game here? Are we destined to repeat Earth's catastrophic mistakes on Mars? Or can we actually build a sustainable future among the stars if we completely rethink our approach? Kaku's warning isn't about abandoning our cosmic dreams. It's about preventing them from becoming humanity's greatest nightmare. Because rushing to Mars with our current mindset and technology isn't bold exploration. It's reckless endangerment on a planetary scale. The clock is ticking, and every major space agency is pushing forward with timelines that ignore these fundamental problems. What Kaku reveals next about the infrastructure reality might be the most sobering wake-up call yet about how unprepared we truly are. The harshest obstacle. Here's where Kaku's analysis becomes absolutely devastating. The infrastructure gap between our Mars ambitions and reality is so enormous it borders on fantasy. Everyone talks about establishing Mars colonies, but Kaku asks the question no one wants to answer. How do you provide housing, power, and life support for even a thousand people on Mars, let alone the million Elon Musk envisions? There are no blueprints, no working prototypes, no manufacturing capabilities that can operate in Mars' hostile environment. Kaku's proposed solution reveals just how far behind we are, self-replicating AI-controlled robots that could build entire cities before humans arrive. The problem? This technology doesn't exist and won't exist for decades, possibly centuries. Every current Mars plan assumes we can somehow transport massive infrastructure from Earth, a logistical impossibility at the scale required. The brutal reality Kaku exposes Every astronaut we send to Mars today would be completely dependent on Earth for survival. Lose that connection, and we don't just lose the mission, we lose lives with no possibility of rescue. This single statement from Kaku cuts to the heart of our Mars delusion and reveals why our entire approach might be fundamentally flawed. Robotic missions to Mars are spectacular successes. The rovers operate for years beyond their planned lifespans, 
gathering invaluable data in conditions that would kill humans in minutes. They don't need warmth, breathable air, food, water, or psychological support. When something breaks, we simply send instructions for repairs or accept the loss. But humans, we need breathable atmosphere, regulated temperature, fresh water, nutritious food, waste management, medical care, and emotional stability every single second of every single day. One failure in any of these systems means death, and there's no backup plan 140 million miles from Earth. Kaku's warning is crystal clear. We've mastered robotic exploration of Mars, but we're nowhere near ready for human colonization. The gap between sending robots and sending people isn't just technical. It's the difference between impressive engineering and preserving human life in the most unforgiving environment imaginable. Yes, we all know the basic facts about Mars by now. The atmosphere is 96% carbon dioxide with barely 1% of Earth's pressure. The average temperature is minus 60 degrees Celsius, cold enough to freeze carbon dioxide into dry ice. Deadly cosmic radiation bombards the surface with no magnetic field for protection. And yes, Elon Musk has grand visions of a million-person Mars city by 2050, with SpaceX's Starship designed to carry 100 people per trip. NASA has its own Artemis program targeting Mars missions in the 2030s, and other space agencies are developing their own Mars strategies. These facts get repeated endlessly in space documentaries and science articles. But what Kaku emphasizes goes far deeper than these surface-level challenges. The real issue isn't whether we know Mars is hostile. It's whether we truly understand what that hostility means for human psychology, society, and long-term survival. The technical problems are solvable with enough time and resources. But the fundamental question Kaku raises cuts to the core of human nature. Are we actually ready to become a space-faring civilization? Or are we just running away from problems we're too afraid to solve at home? Michio Kaku's warning isn't a rejection of humanity's cosmic destiny. It's a demand for wisdom before we leap into the void. He wants us to reach Mars, to become a multi-planet species, to secure humanity's future among the stars. But he wants us to do it right, not fast. Not as refugees fleeing a dying world, but as a mature civilization ready to shoulder the immense responsibility of life beyond Earth. Kaku's message is ultimately one of hope wrapped in harsh reality. We can colonize Mars successfully, but only if we prove we deserve to. Only if we solve the fundamental challenges of human cooperation, resource management and psychological resilience that we're still struggling with on our home planet. The Red Planet isn't going anywhere. The question is whether we'll arrive as conquerors of space or as victims of our own impatience. Kaku's warning gives us the roadmap, if we're brave enough to follow it. If you found these revelations as eye-opening as we did, you won't want to miss what we uncover next about humanity's future in space. The challenges facing our species go far beyond Mars, and the solutions might surprise you. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you're always the first to know when we release our next deep dive into the science that's shaping our destiny. Because whether we succeed or fail among the stars depends on understanding these warnings before it's too late. Hit that like button if Kaku's insights changed how you think about Mars colonization. And let us know in the comments. Do you think we should slow down our Mars timeline or push forward despite the risks? Your perspective matters as we navigate humanity's greatest challenge yet.